Niklaus says, this video is not about anybody or anyone in particular except for my niece and her school friends and the story that I'm going to share. Other than that, there are far too many situations that I have come across that I don't keep note of where I see this and it's a human condition. It's a human condition. Hello. How are you guys? It's Wednesday evening and I am here with my beautiful Thomas Niklaus. We're just here getting ready for bath time and I wanted to come on and chat with you guys real quick. So I had an interesting conversation um, with my sister-in-law about my niece and uh, I thought it was really cool and relevant because it, it is one of those items that I listed in my pet peeves kind of came up in her in her life, meaning my niece's life, and I think she's in sixth grade. I will tell you that she has been ahead of her time since she was a baby. She was, you know, speaking, she was at a hundred words at like, I want to say like nine months. But anyway, um, so my sister-in-law calls me usually on her way home from work and she was telling me about how there was, um, there's this girl in her school that is, um, like, I don't know if you would say she's depressed or what, she's really young, of course, being in sixth grade, but she, pardon me for a moment, I'm gonna get my coffee, I forgot I had it. Look at this little boy from this angle for a moment. But anyway, she's she's been real moody with the girls. She's been a little bit nasty, and then and then she goes into uh, something that actually our older daughter does too. But she she goes into like I, everybody hates me, nobody likes me, and um, I don't know if. If you guys, I'm sure some of you saw my video, but I don't know if everybody saw my video about my pet peeve of like, I guess the best way to put it is making, when people kind of, well, I guess I was talking about arts, art in that particular statement. I was talking about how when, um, if an artist really, really needs money and they, or somebody who's selling a baby really, really needs money and they come on and they almost try to like guilt people into buying the doll because they need the money so bad as though someone's going to just say okay you know I'll spend 500 bucks because you need it like I wasn't going to buy the doll but now I will that kind of thing but it really gets to me I see it a lot a lot a lot and I see it a lot in this community only because that's where I spend a lot of my time but I see it even in my like new age spiritual positive circles I've even seen it there on my Facebook because that's pretty much the most the bulk of the people that I'm friends with on Facebook um, are from that circle and that's making um, somebody making their emotional well-being or their emotional state like other people's responsibility and like uninvited so um, and I have mentioned this in a previous video, you know, like, doesn't anybody love me? Click yes or no, that kind of thing. Now, I have got my fair share of emotional issues, depression, anxiety within my family to the extreme, to the level of, of successful suicide that's happened in my family lines, okay? So it's not like I'm not sympathetic to it, but... I don't feel like, um, I don't feel it's appropriate or fair to make your well-being the responsibility of people who never asked for that responsibility, if that makes sense, um, and then make them, and then make them responsible if it doesn't go well, you know what I mean? It's certainly... Um, not one that I find foreign because I've definitely been in moods where I want to tell everybody in Facebook to screw off because nobody cares about me, you know, but I just don't do it. Anyway, so back to the story. So, 
So she's telling me about how this girl is like, woe is me, and that now it's everybody's fault that she wants to, um, you know, that she doesn't want to live anymore because they didn't um, call her and, and that kind of thing. So, um, I said, well, what did, what did she say? My niece say, she said, well, she said, I feel, she said, I think it's important to feel that, to feel compassion for people and to feel empathy for people. And like, it sucks that she's hurting and I certainly don't want her to hurt and I would never do anything to make her hurt. But I also think that it's unfair to make us feel like it's our fault or that it's our responsibility because it's her responsibility to take care of her mental health and her emotional health and her needs. Huh. Sixth grade, right? Sixth grade. So just incredible. Now she's always been ahead of her time and she's gone to a school that really um, fosters um, emotional intelligence and social intelligence as well, which is great. Um, but yeah, I thought that that was awesome and I thought it was so, so relevant because every single day, um, you know, there's a lot of depression and a lot of sadness and life is hard and the world is hard and our brains aren't always functioning at capacity because the food sucks and, um, you know, like, our environment is challenging. There's a lot of things that factor in, but, um, so I see, you know, I see that every single day and I just had a friend recently take her life. So I know, I know, I know it's hard and she had a kid, a young kid. So imagine the state of mind you have to be in to leave your kid. You know what I mean? Like it's not, life is not easy. But yeah, I thought her advice was absolutely amazing and sound. It is not right to make it somebody else's problem or fault or responsibility for your well-being, especially when they're not doing anything to you. So I thought that was really cool, and it reminded me of another story. Now, I don't think it was the same girl, um, but there was a situation where they were at the lunch table, and one of her friends was telling um, how she she didn't really like this other girl that wasn't at the table anymore because um, she was just like really she had become like clingy I guess like I guess she said that she had just said hi to her in a hall one time or she had like been at the same party with her one time or something like that and so she was being nice to her and I guess then the girl was like calling her every morning and like texting her all day and texting her all night and why you know just like almost like they were best friends right away and then like wanting to talk about other people and so she told so my niece this wasn't my niece but she was at the table when she told her this and then the girl found out and then the girl found out that my niece was at the table and then she wanted my niece to like not be friends with that girl anymore or to like you know protect her from like ganging up on her and bullying her and all this other stuff right and it's so funny that I'm talking about elementary school and middle school age kids and but I see the same things going on here that's kind of funny anyway um so she so she starts, she start, my niece starts getting hounded by this girl too, that it's not right that this other girl's bullying her. And then like the girl's sister started calling her and, um, like to where my sister had to get involved. My sister-in-law had to get involved and, you know, basically like block her number until they could calm down and stuff. But, um, my sister-in-law told her pretty much that, well, number one, we had to talk about what's bullying, right? Because I don't think there's a whole lot of bullying that goes on in her school. But she told her there's a big difference between, like, talking shit about somebody or bullying them, right? So there's, like, three levels. One's, like, talking crap that's not true, which would kind of be, like, slander. Another one is 
talking crap about somebody, but it is true. But it makes a person uncomfortable that you shared it, but it's not a lie. And then I guess the third one would be bullying, and that's aggressive. And that's like, you know, like pursuing somebody, ganging up on them, going after them, actively trying to make them feel bad, actively like putting them down, actively, actively trying to like push them into negative. It's not just saying like, it's not just like repeating a story and sharing your opinion on it. So, um, so yeah, we had to like, I thought that that was a really good way to put it. Like there's a difference between talking shit and bullying. Um, I think it all worked out now. I'm not even sure if the girl goes to her school anymore, but you know, they get older and moments pass and, and everything's okay now, but but I think that's good advice to us. You know, I always try to go by the rule. And certainly there are times that I've said my opinion and I'm like, you know, like, maybe that would not sound great if somebody, you know, if the person, you know, heard my opinion on that. But at the same time, like I try not to say anything that I wouldn't be 100% okay with the other person repeating. Because... You speak with integrity and you speak the truth. Now, um, and it's also, even if I said to my friend, like, I swear you'll never tell them that I said this. Like, even if they did tell them that I said that, like, I couldn't be mad at my friend for telling because I said it and I should be able to stand behind what I say. And if I don't want it repeated, then there probably isn't something helpful to be said. So... That's why it's awesome to adopt the opinion that I don't give a shit what anybody else thinks about me. Because in that way, if somebody expresses their opinion of me and it's not a great one, then I am not touched by it. And it doesn't affect my self-esteem or my sense of self. Um, easier said than done, but it's a practice. That's why they say it's a practice. You practice a sport, you practice, so it's a practice. Look at this cute guy. I love him. Anyway, so that's a total tangent. Yeah, so I actually, my initial plan for a video today was um, something, um, it was like a list video. At this point, though, I've forgotten half my list. <laughs> so, you know, like, you know, three things that blah, blah, blah. So, and I never, ever write anything down. So I'm sure it'll pop back into my head and that will just be a separate video. So what else is going on here? Well, um, I'm hanging out with this dude. I've been doing some dishes. I'm gonna cook some dinner. Um, I'm going to a lunch with a good friend tomorrow, which is something I'm really looking forward to. I don't socialize a lot and I don't take a lot of time to have um, friends actually. And I feel like the older that I get, the, the more reclusive I get, like, the more anxious I get about even, like, listening to my voicemail sometimes, I guess. And I'm very, very poor at calling back and keeping in touch, and um, I'm in one of those low cycles where it's harder for me to call people back and... Um, like I haven't talked to my dad in a while and for no reason like I no issues with him I'm not mad at him I'm not upset with him that's Augie yelping in the background he's barking at Tumo probably Tumo is on the couch like teasing him and Augie doesn't get up there yet and Augie wants to play Augie is the puppy and Tumo is my uh, my baby my my two and a half year old standard poodle so I've got some phone calls to um to make and all that stuff like I definitely need to keep in touch with my family um got lunch tomorrow farmer's market again on Saturday just a lot of the same old same old guys for sure <laughs> oh you know what why don't we bring Bruce on you guys haven't seen Bruce in a little bit why don't I get him down here he can sit with me Klaus for a minute if I can do it without falling okay here's Bruce guys if you guys haven't 
Maybe you didn't catch the video. He was my birthday present to myself this year. Um, he definitely came before I expected to be making a change in my um, Reborn collection before Charlie came. But here he is. He is my little zombie boy. He's not exactly a baby. He's just sort of like a miniature child. Um, oh, sit down to him. He's got a little bite on his cheek and another one on his arm. That yellow, I don't know if it'll translate into the, the video, but on my phone right now, this looks very, very yellow. It's an undertone in, in person in real life. Maybe if I, yeah, anyway. He is a porcelain doll. He's painted um, by um, Cat's Creepy Creations on Instagram. She has a really cool resale shop in, Salem, Massachusetts, and she also paints creepy dolls, and he is my second favorite one that I've ever seen from her. I missed out on my favorite, favorite one from her, um, hoping that she comes across the doll again and can recreate it for me because she's incredible, but anyway, I think my new tradition is a new creepy doll every year, um, because to me, actually, I think he is adorable and look look at the paint look at the eyes he one eye is like filmed over and the other is so clear as the infection is spreading he's got like auburn hair reddish brown hair and he is so sweet look at his little shoes and his little red socks and he's great he is absolutely great so he was awesome yeah so he's still here This tumor right here. See his his hair. So I've just been I've been really 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 enjoying Charlie a lot. Um, definitely interacting with that baby more off camera than any other baby in my collection. There's just that little something about her. I don't know what it is, and I am more shocked than anybody else. <laughs> probably that it's a girl because I am all about the boys and I didn't want any girls in my collection to begin with and now I have two. Um, don't worry, Niklaus is still my main man. Yes, he is. So I think we're going to, um, maybe we'll take care of this boy's hair tonight. We're going to make some food and then I'm probably going to hop back on the computer and keep working. All right, well, thanks for listening to my um, my ramblings. I hope that the information resonated with some of you. It definitely resonates with me. Um, also to look at myself, like where do I do the things that I talked about? Where do I feel sorry for myself? Where do I play games with my husband to like get the attention that I want or to get the sympathy that I want? Where do I play things up emotionally? Um, I definitely think if you are um, feeling the way that little girl said and wanting to hurt herself and the way that my friend did and unfortunately didn't get help, um, that you do get help. A lot of times there's something physical, chemistry going on in the brain. Sometimes it's just emotional. Sometimes it's spiritual. But um, I definitely think that speaking to the people who love you if you are you know have people in your life or reaching out and getting help from people who are trained and can offer help to get to the bottom of it and and find um find a way back to wellness and completion and that's like that's the most important thing because i can tell you that the anonymous people that are sitting behind the computers or the people on the, you know like they're not equipped to help any of us feel better about ourselves. Well, I mean, maybe somebody has a good piece of advice or something, but they certainly um, get real, real human contact, I would say. Anyway, wisdom of a child. Thank you guys so much. And definitely feel free to contact me. Leave me your comments down below. I look forward to hearing from you guys and to seeing your babies. And until next time, and next time hopefully I will remember the list I wanted to make for you. <laughs> Be well. Much love, guys. Bye.